Hi, this is episode 62 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Whether you're looking to get hired for a new development job or moving up in an organization where you're at now, understanding how APIs work is critical for many positions. In this guide, I'm gonna help you answer the programming job question of how do you implement API authentication? As a quick review, remember that API stands for Application Programming Interface. APIs are essentially tools that let third-party applications communicate with other apps. An example would be posting a link on Twitter and having it auto-post on Facebook. In order to make this type of functionality possible, Twitter had to use the Facebook API in order to post on a user's behalf. Now that we know what an API is, let's discuss API authentication. When you're working with the APIs, it's typically important to ensure that requests are being made by valid third-party applications. For example, imagine that you built an API that sends out text messages. You'd want to make sure that only apps you trust could communicate with your server Service, right? API authentication is a process of ensuring that only authorized applications are able to interact with your program. This may seem like a very basic concept because you're used to using a username and password each time you log into sites like Facebook. Where API authentication is different than the normal login process is that it has to be completed 100% in code. Usually this means including information in the API request that contains a username, password, API key, things like that. This information can then be checked by the receiving application to make sure that the request is coming from a valid app. You can compare this to a site like Facebook checking your email and password against their database. This ensures that you are who you say you are. So now that you have an idea of what API authentication is, why is it important? Let's continue with our example of having an API that sends text messages. If you don't implement authentication into your service, you run the risk of anyone being able to send SMS messages. This includes apps that would send spam and malicious data out to users. Obviously, this would be a bad thing to happen and could even cause you to get penalized or banned from sending messages out, even from legitimate sources. Take a look at the most popular APIs in the world, such as Google Maps, Twitter, Facebook, or Yelp. You'll discover that they each require any applications that communicate with them to be authenticated. In order to understand how to implement API authentication, Let's dive right into the code. For this example, I'm going to use a Ruby on Rails framework. That means that the syntax will be specific to Rails. However, the overarching concepts can be applied to any other language or framework. I've taken this walkthrough from a course I'll be publishing next month. The course will focus on how to build a Ruby on Rails microservice application architecture. To reiterate, if you're not familiar with the Rails framework, don't tune out. You can apply a similar implementation to pretty much any type of framework that you use. The app we'll be adding authentication to is an API that sends out SMS messages, just like our example from earlier. At a high level, it allows third-party applications to send out API requests and it sends out text messages with the data provided. In the course, I follow the test-driven development process for implementing authentication. However, that's slightly out of scope for this walkthrough and it make the video quite a bit longer. You can check it out if you want to learn how to build the app and follow Rails best practices. The first step we'll take is to create a method called authenticate and then have it run before any service tries to communicate with the API. Inside of the authenticate method, I'm leveraging the Rails built-in method authenticate or request with HTTP basic. This will help perform tasks such as automatically requesting that an outside app supply login credentials. Inside of the authenticate method, it simply performs a database lookup and verifies that there's a client with matching API credentials. I'm using source app and API key for those attributes. However, those are simply arbitrary names. They could just as easily be username and password. If you run this in the Rails server, you'll see that this works and the browser is asking for login credentials. This is essentially mimicking what the API will encounter when it tries to communicate with the app. I also ran a database query to find client and I found one that had the following credentials. If I enter in the wrong credentials, the app won't see the content and it'll ask for login credentials again, as shown here. But if I enter the correct login credentials into the browser, it'll let me access the page. 
Testing in the browser is all well and good. However, this is an API. Therefore, it needs to be tested with JSON data in the code. So how exactly can we do that? Well, before authentication was implemented, I was able to create a notification by sending a curl request. What's curl? Curl is a command line tool that lets developers mimic sending various protocol requests. In this case, we'll be sending an API request. This curl request used to work. However, if you try it now, it fails, as it should, and it fails with the error message, HTTP basic, access denied. So how can we include our login credentials via curl? Thankfully, curl has a nice built-in way of passing in parameters for HTT basic auth requests like ours. We can prepend this code, which, if you remember, is simply the login credentials we tested in the browser separated by a colon. The full curl request would look something like this. Now, if we run this command in the terminal, it'll process properly, and it even sends out the text message. I hope that this has been a helpful guide for helping you answer the question of how to implement API authentication, and good luck with the coding interview.